Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we are uh, discussing aesthetic philosophy. Um, but before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking <laughs> peach <laughs> fruit wine. By the Texas Southwind Vinery. Is that what that, that says? That says winery. We like it, Ray. Texas Southwind. Vineyard and winery. Vineyard Sorry. and winery. It's got a cool label. It's got a nice cowboy hat there. And yeah. uh, it's, it's peach wine. <laughs> it um, is peach wine. So for anyone who has ever watched this show before and has ears or eyes, you might notice we're not drinking beer. We're not drinking beer for the first time Which in feels weird years. as balls. Yeah, yeah, first time ever. Ever, ever. So, you know, we've been kind of pitching the idea around for about a year now yeah. of like expanding into wine. So, you know, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, we all like wine. Uh, two, sometimes we get kind of tired of beer. And three, it, it, it gives us something else to throw in there. It's a we little all, broader We have scale. had 200 and something beers already. Yeah. We've that also, was yesterday. We had 200 beers yesterday. We've also talked about spirits. I, I, it may be a little while yeah. before we do that. But but uh, we thought with this show being kind of art-centered, maybe a good you know test case. That's not to, true at all, actually. None of that is true. <laughs> None of that is true. Nothing I have ever said has ever been true, and that's been the point of this show. Sorry. Congratulations, you're in on the secret. <laughs> no, the thing about, like, well, we're talking about art, so we're going to drink fancy fartsy beer. I mean, wine. <laughs> that's not, not true. what we're doing? No. Actually... I picked this. I picked peach wine. Spe- well, I picked fruit wine, non-grape wine specifically. Um, because a lot of people say that this isn't really wine. And it doesn't grow on a vine? Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm just saying tomatoes grow on a vine. Does that mean you could make tomato wine? We should make tomato I wine. I jalapeno wine. It's oh weird. Ugh. It's Ugh. real weird. Um, it makes better vinegar. Oh, look. It's a white wine. Of course it is. No, it's a peach wine. Yeah. So here, somebody can just. Mm. There you go. <clears throat> but anyway, um, no, I picked it because, like, I think one of the things you hear the most whenever you're hearing in popular conversation about art is some crazy fucking art exhibit, installation, painting of nothing, that that's not art. And wow. so. That's not art, and this isn't wine. I, I'll agree with the second part. Fuck um, off. Okay. Whew. Mm. Mm. So anyway, um, aesthetic philosophy is something we've never covered on this show before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. God, I hope you're watching the YouTube, because John's being weird as balls. But anyway. Um... So we've never covered aesthetic philosophy on the show before, Um, though it is a significant branch of it. Uh, So a lot of what I wanted to do in this show is kind of introduce the idea and a little bit of the what gets talked about in this. And um, hopefully in the future, we'll have some episodes where we actually dive a little deeper into some uh, philosophers who spoke on it. Aestheticism. That's a Aestheticism, word. yes. Aestheticism, yes. yes. Um, but, uh, yeah, delve into either some of the ideas yeah. or the philosophers who spoke on it. Um, but jumping in, essentially, it covers two main topics, um, art and beauty. A lot of people actually separate it into, um, oh, God, what's it called? Art objects. And objects of natural beauty. And that's kind of where um, you're looking at paintings, sculptures. So either either me or paintings of me. I got you. I got you. Yes, Mike. You yep. or paintings of you. So are you saying you're an object of natural beauty? Yes. Yes, yes. So it's okay to objectify Mike. It is okay to objectify me. It's, it, it, if you People get the generally not okay. To grab my ass, feel free. I'll take you to a club later. <laughs> I don't know what club you want to take me to. I'll pass. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, so, 
honestly, I don't. I told you guys I was struggling over here. I can tell. Um, but one of the things that I found was really interesting. So we've talked about Emmanuel Camp before. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I didn't realize that he actually um, put out a, a considerable amount of thought into the philosophy spheres um, on aestheticism. Uh, he actually held that, um, what he called the theory of pure beauty. Um, and he said there were four things that qualified things as art. It was really interesting because the things that we go and see in um, art museums, he would actually not classify any of that as art. Um, it, it was a really interesting idea. So he said art had to be free from concept, uh, objective. Say that again. Free from concept? Correct. So can you <coughs> explain that? Um, there could not be an end or a, a goal for the art. It has to be beautiful just because it's beautiful. It, so it yeah. has to have no purpose, be purposeless. Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, it has to be objective. Um, it has to be disinterested in the spectator. Um, and it has to be, it has to have obligatoriness. Um, so life. Obligatoriness. Yes. Um, so. Sounds like a character in Star Wars. Oh, does it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so essentially, he would say that um, the artist's participation in creating a piece um, makes it not art. Um, he would say that art that relies on the reaction of somebody observing it is not art. Um, one of the things that he described as actually being art was the seemingly random but beautiful pattern in leaves of a bush. Um, so a lot of what he actually seemed to focus on was what would have fallen into the other two categories, objects of natural beauty. Um, so he wouldn't accept like uh, art with a political agenda as art? Correct. Okay, that's <coughs> strange. Yeah, I really don't like that. Why not? Well, be, because in so when we won't want to argue about what something is, there's mm-hmm. two kinds of arguments we can make. One is the highly subjective argument of um, syntax and or definition. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, you know, what does this mean versus this word and where, do, where are the lines between the words? So you can argue what the words mean. The other is an argument about the real thing. So when does a chair become a chair? Is it mm-hmm. when it has four legs or... Uh, and, and that more has to do with functionality, right? Mm-hmm. Because art, at, by his own definition, is, is, is highly functionless, it seems the only argument that you can make at that point is a definitional one, right? Uh, but he then goes on to say something that is not what is used in the nomenclature by anybody. So then I have to wonder... Why is he making these assertions, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I could I could argue if I said, you know, uh, tape is something that is sticky and long uh, and, and, and you know, in, in, in strips, you know, whatever. I could argue that I'm making that definition because I've heard a lot of people talk about tape and that's the thing they're talking about, right? But if I then said tape is a tube that is hard and uh, large enough for a person to fit in, you would look at me and say, I've never heard of someone say tape and describe that at all. And that kind of seems to be what he's done here. And I, I wonder, where does he get the foundation for this argument? Yeah. Or one of the things when, um, when, and if you've spent any, really any amount of time with a child over the age of talking age, when they will just use words or not real just words. Just sprinkle their words at random. Yes. Yeah. But they'll they'll Ice assign. Ice beer beef. Yeah, that. Yeah. Exactly. They will use words for things that don't uh, that nobody else is going to have any reference yeah. point for. Um. <clears throat> but yeah, I see what you're saying, and it definitely does seem that very few people subscribe to this particular uh, 
definition of what art is. Mm -hmm. Although I do think there are some interesting aspects of it there. Um, <clears throat> I think that Kant, um, were he not such an extremist in this, um, and actually probably uh, pulls from this at least a little bit, um, a lot of people will argue that um, something can only be art that was intended to be art. Uh, okay, I would agree. Yeah. So if the person created something uh, for the purpose of being art, then it doesn't matter if somebody likes it. It doesn't matter. Um, that's, that's weird to me. Okay. Because you say that it is intended to be art. So let me ask you this. <clears throat> I'm not speaking about reality in any way. It's not like this actually is happening. But let's just say that there was a leader of a country who wanted to build a giant wall as a piece of art to monument himself. Mm -hmm. But other people were of the belief that it was a practical defense measure. Let's say that happened, for instance. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, be, because there was a lot of people involved in it, and one did have the intention of it being art, and another, or multiple, you know, we can talk about, you know, how many it would take, didn't have the intention of it being art. Is it art? Sure it is. Uh, for the same reason that I think that uh, architecture, a building might be made to, you know, to, to house people, but still be designed <laughs> to be a beautiful piece of art that people can can look at and enjoy so, the, uh, the appearance. So, so it's both practical and art. So then we're saying if anyone <coughs> intended it to be art, it's art. Yeah, so yeah. That, that's actually another um, interesting realm of defining art. And I don't remember the guy who, who kind of started this school of thought, but he gave the porn argument that... Um, the, that you can't really actually define art, but you know it when you see it. Um, Oliver Wendell Holmes talked about pornography that way. Said, I don't know what it is, but I know it when I see it. Yes, but it was somebody else who said this about art. Yeah. Um, but yeah, which interestingly just completely negates art. When everything is art, yeah. if anybody thinks that it's art, then nothing is art, and then art is not a thing. Art is... To be art is to exist and be observed, and it's it, it and it exists individually. It, yeah. it, you know, uh, yeah. it, it it's it's art if you think it's art. So yeah. let me ask you this: <clears throat> I make a painting. Uh huh. I intend for it to be art. It's very definitely intended to be art. I then die. Uh huh. It then gets put in a tomb. I'm an ancient Egyptian. Uh huh. And sealed up and not seen for two thousand years. Okay. So it's an unobserved object. And nobody has any. And nobody living has any intention for it. During the period when it is hidden away, not looked at, not observed, no intention made, was it ceasing to be art during that period? So it was art when it was made, and it's art when it's discovered. But between that two, yeah. If there's anybody who observes it that considers it to be art, when it begins being yeah. observed again. Or better yet, for a shorter period of time, there is, I can't really see all of it, but there's a piece of art up here on the wall, right? That There's that, a painting. I wouldn't that, call it art. I would call it art. <laughs> uh, that Anastasia made, I actually think it's rather nice. But anyway, um, there, there's a painting up there. Uh, when we leave for the day and go to work and turn off the lights, has it ceased to be art while we're gone? And it becomes it, furniture. It, it becomes art again when we return? I, I mean, mean, do you cease to be whenever you are unconscious and everybody else is not around you observing your existence? Nothing exists until it's been observed. Well, and, you know, I, th I, think, I think that's a different question that we can ask. I don't, think, I don't necessarily think it's a related question because um, one is talking about uh, exist existence and I can't remember the, the it's word. Not, you're not, it's not a question of existence. It's a question of what function. exists. It's a question of function. Yeah. Because if I am assaulted and I take this bottle 
and hit someone over the head with it, what was once bottle has Becomes now become club. a club. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So the 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 and this this is the same object in both cases. Uh, so the question is function here, which I think is 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 not at all tied to the question of do things well, exist yeah, when they're back not. Back to the back to the architecture <laughs> idea. I think if you live in a building and you're walking up the steps up the stairs to go to go to your class every day, that is a building. But if you're uh, going to go to your apartment, it's a building. But if you're walking by and you look up and you admire the the lines of it it's art yeah if it evokes some emotion in you um well and i think that's why people like intentionality because even when you're not around it was intended to be art which made it art which means that even when nobody's observing it is it is still art um i actually found did you know plato did not like Art or aesthetics at all, like he was super anti all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah, it does make sense. I had never put those two together, um, you know, because he's all about rationality and yeah. logic and yada yada, um, and specifically did not like that art and fiction um, elicited emotions in people and encouraged them to operate using this irrational part or what he called the this irrational part of their brain. The what? answer to any question where you say, did you know Plato? The answer is yes. I don't believe that. Okay. Did, did you know Plato? <laughs> yes, yes. We went to school together. Yes. Yeah, I believe that. Huh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, so let me ask a question, if you don't mind me kind of coming in. And, Fine. All right. <clears throat> we have this debate about what art is, right? When do you call something art? But I think there's another question that needs to be asked of why art is. Mm-hmm. Why is that a function that one even exists, and two, once it does exist, that we pursue, that we 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 follow, that we we tend to like point at things in art, and we find important and invest yeah, time absolutely. and resources and money so, into. So that's actually kind of cool, and it's a place where Aristotle broke away from his teacher. Um, he a- <laughs> he actually said that. Um, that we have a need for art, an emotional need for art. Um, It's kind of hippy-dippy, honestly. Um, But he said that we need to experience things like happiness and sadness and anguish um, and adrenaline in order to remain in balance. Yeah, I think he's right. And that, oh, but he was a dick. Oh, you're still a dick. (laughs) Fine. You can be right and and be a dick. I'm right frequently. Well, not frequent. I'm right sometimes. Mm, well, you're okay. right at I, a frequency. We okay. just don't know what that frequency is. <laughs> I, I've been right before. How's that? I love you. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, but anyway, it was 1993. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. But um, but anyway, so he says that we need these things to keep us in balance, and that when we are not experiencing those emotions and those those feelings in our regular lives that art can actually stand in as a, uh, a substitute to elicit those, those particular emotions and reactions. You know, I think it's, it's really and interesting because something, well, that's what Aristotle says. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So something really interesting about uh, neurology in the brain, we are pretty sure we know the physical structure of consciousness. I'll put it that way, yeah, to be real specific. So we found a part of the brain that if you take some electrodes and excite it, people become unconscious. They're there, their heart beats, they sit there like this, doing nothing, and you turn that electric uh, uh, shock off, and to them, their experiences, there was a gap in time. They from from the moment before to the moment after there no time that they don't perceive yeah I had that same experience at a Pink Floyd concert in 1986. That's called drugs or alcohol. Yeah, go ahead. So that's one of those. So we we know this is there, and what this part of the brain looks like is it is a little bitty uh, chunk of the brain that then has these tentacle these tentacles that go out and connect a bunch of different parts of the brain. So just keep that in the in the back of your mind. On top of that, we also kind of know the function of emotion. Uh, Emotion tends to be subconscious calculations going on 
in your brain. When you get a bad feeling about something, there's something subconscious that is calculated in a very logical sense. This is bad, but it can't communicate that to you in a very direct way. It can't communicate the steps. You just get this bad feeling about it. And sometimes it's very <coughs> useful, uh, you know, in split second decisions, uh, not having to rationalize your thoughts, just getting this instant bad feeling and your hackles are raised can be useful. <coughs> Um, and so with that, with this connected piece uh, and the way that we know we kind of hear ourselves talk to us in our head, uh, it's very much thought that y what you are is this one piece of your brain that's connected and the other parts of your brain talk to you through those connections. But there's some parts of your brain that aren't connected to the part of your brain that is you. And that's where we kind of get this subconscious feeling, these emotions, right? And art seems to be something that tickles your emotions. So could it be that the, the use of art, the, the, the part of it that we need and invest in, is a way to work out, to exercise, let's say, the parts of your brain that don't maybe get as much active exercise as the rest of your brain? Interesting idea. Yeah. So I, I actually had an interesting conversation uh, with my mother a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. Um, she had come up here to visit, um, my, both mom and dad did, um, and they had gotten a hotel room. We went and met them at their hotel room <coughs> and somehow it came up. She like pointed at these paintings on the wall and they were quite seriously just like a white canvas and like a few blue <coughs> streaks one way and some green streaks the other, I yep. think something like that. Very just basic stuff. And then on the opposite wall was like a, a water scene or something like that. And it was interesting. She, she kind of points at the white streaky things and says something along the lines of, look at those. I can't believe they, they, they even call those art, whatever, whatever. I said, well, um, some people think that for something to be art, it has to elicit a response from its observers. Um, not simply being observed, but... They like elicited a response. And that's what I said. I said, if that is the purpose of art, if that is what makes something art, it definitely elicited a response from you. And funnily, this painting that you barely even looked at, have not noticed, you could arguably say, by that definition, is not art. Because it, it passed through your consciousness without any sort of reaction from you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, um, I, I think about uh, hotels you stayed in. And mm -hmm. There was a hotel that I stayed in in Austin, and I've been at many of them, and they all have that same fucking red barn picture up hanging up in the wall. To me, that's not art because it's it's just it, it's it's so generic. It's, yeah. But but it meets the definition. Yeah. It got a it got a a, uh, a reaction from me. My reaction was, it, well, it was just it's fine. Yeah. You know, it's not a it's not a big deal. Um, I want to talk uh, kind of in here while we're, while we're at mm -hmm. it, because it kind of fits here, about Piss Christ. Y'all heard about this one? This was uh, uh, Andre Serrano. I, 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 when you brought this up, it mm -hmm. reminded me. He, uh, he got a, an endowment from the arts, from the, from the federal government, mm -hmm. to, to do this. And his art was he took a crucifix and put it in a jar of piss. And... It, called Piss Christ, and it, it toured, and very, very controversial years ago. Uh, and people complained that that wasn't art, that all that was, that was just there to uh, inflame people. It was, you know, he got this, he got this endowment to piss in a, in, 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 in a, in a jar and stick, mm -hmm. stick a crucifix in it. Um, but to me, it, it, it is art. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. I find it offensive, but it's, it is art. It got, it got that rise out of me and a lot of other people. So every time that a terrorist has killed somebody for drawing a picture of Muhammad, have they then legitimized the art of that drawing? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> and making I, a response to it? I, I think so. Uh, I think so. But that's, uh, you know, it, it, this was a, this was a big deal, by, I guess about 10 years ago. Uh, uh, but, but, you know, I, I think some of our listeners might remember this. It was something that was, that was actually, I do not remember pretty, that at all. It was pretty big deal. Um, 
it's, it's since been destroyed. It, it was shock really? art. It was shock right. art. It's, its purpose was to create discussion, and it did create a lot of discussion. Oh, yeah. Art. Yeah. Uh, uh, Banksy. Mm-hmm. <coughs> yeah. You know, uh, w- w- with his, his uh, my graffiti, brain, graffiti on, on, on the sides of buildings and stuff. You know, people, some people say that's not art. That's vandalism. That's not art. Right. Well, did, did, it get a, did it get a reaction from you? It oh, did. Yeah. It's art. Yeah. One of the ones that I really liked was um, there was a series of white paintings Yeah. Um, that went around maybe a couple of years ago now. I don't know. It wasn't real long ago. Um, and they were white canvases painted white. And it was amazing how many people just got pissed and would walk out of there going, I could do that. But you didn't. But they didn't. And there we step away from the reaction side of it, or we have coupled, I suppose, the reaction side of it. Um, but their reaction is, I could do that. So is there a difference? Um, is there some combination there where it's got to cause a reaction and have some intentionality by the author uh, or the artist? Because there is an element there. Like, I wouldn't say that when I paint my walls white that I am doing art. I'm arting. Um, Being but... artisanal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Now, if you pissed on your walls, would it be, it'd be art? I do that. I used to, I've am done I that a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an artist. <laughs> I'm a real artist. They were the outside oh. walls, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm an artist. I'm an artist, guys. Oh, so anyway. Lord, Lord. So about this wine. Yes. Speaking of piss. Speaking yeah, I was, I was going to make that if you um, didn't. Let's, uh, let's talk about it. Um, who would like to start? Is this what piss tastes like? I will I, go I, first. Go ahead. I'll show you later. Um, no, you won't. No, you won't. We'll put on some R. Kelly music no, and make an evening. No, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Locking you out. So, uh, yeah, this is, this is probably the best uh, glass of peach Welches I've ever had. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know. It's uh, it's 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 hard for me. First of all, uh, this is kind of our first uh, uh, voyage into wine, so I'm sure there's going to be a lot of learning going on uh, before we we start getting these right. So I, I would say somewhat ignore the, you know our early ratings on don't, this. Don't ignore mine. Mine will be right. But um, but yeah, it's it's really sweet. It, it tastes almost like a, a dessert type beverage, which is not kind of the thing. <laughs> I'm looking for. However, <clears throat> if I think about a peach. Um, this is this this is peachy. Where I'm going to hit it, it doesn't taste very whiny to me. <clears throat> and even it's on the low ABV side of a wine. It's ten percent, which you know for a wine, uh, twelve, fourteen is pretty standard. Sixteen's gonna be high. So it's even a low ABV wine. It, it really tastes more of a recreational drink and I don't mean that in the alcohol sense but something I, I'm going to say this is going to be this is going to be the wrong thing to say but a kid's drink or an inexperienced yeah. person's drink you know yeah or it's <clears throat> something you try for the sake of trying it yeah. when you're in a tasting room however I, I, this is not going to have any longevity with me honestly if if you know uh, I was going on a date with somebody and I got him this wine, this would be a disrespect wine. This would be like, you don't know wine, this is going to be sweet, you'll like this. This would be a disrespect wine. Yeah. Um, and Basic bitch. Yeah. So for that, I'm going to give it a pretty low rating. Uh, I am going to give it back some points for being peach because uh, I think it's hard to not get that from a peach wine. I'm going to go one eight. One eight. Okay. Yeah. Wow, okay. You or me. <clears throat> so... Um, I'm actually going to give this a 1.4 and I'm going to come at that from, yes, Mike. Okay. Okay. Um, it is unnecessarily sweet. Mm -hmm. It does not have to be this sweet and it is unnecessarily unpeachy. There is not enough peach flavor to it. And I think that really, yeah, you're drinking a different wine than I am. Okay. I see a peach in the bottom of my glass. What do you? <laughs> no, it, it's it's not though. It is not peachy enough. Um, it's too sweet. It's almost syrupy. And I will give you that. It, it is almost syrupy. Yeah. Yeah. The the feel of it in your mouth, even when you're, <clears throat> <sighs> even 
Even when you're uh, drinking a sweet white grape wine, this is vastly different. This actually has the texture of our mead when it's only been fermenting for a week or two. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. yeah. So go ahead. One point what? Four. Okay. This is shit. This it's is gonna terrible. It's going to get a point two. This is god awful. This honestly tastes like uh, like they took and just dumped out the juice from canned, from a can of peaches and, and told me to drink it. Put it a little is, vodka in there. It's fucking terrible. There's nothing good about this. There's nothing enjoyable. And I, I'm a wine guy. I like wine. I don't like white wine usually. Uh-huh. But it, this, I can't, I can't name something good about this. Uh, I think it's, I think the peach is too much. Not, not you know, you went with not enough. I think it's overwhelmingly peachy, uh, to the point that that I just I, I've had two drinks. Every time I do it, I make this terrible face because mm-hmm. it's it's awful. Oh um, yeah, no, I'm gonna like. I'm, I'm not sure I'm gonna finish this bottle. Yeah. If I do, I'm probably gonna pour some more in here and then pour a shot of vodka into it. Actually, <laughs> producer I, man. So it'll be reasonable. There's some big glasses in there and some whiskey and the big like ice cubes that are round. You have to run it under hot water to get uh, the casing off. Yeah, there you go. I am going. Uh, I'm. I am going to generously give it a one. I don't think it deserves that high, but I. I but 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 to be fair and not just. Comp- I feel like that's as fair as I can be without I, torpedoing I, it. Here's here's why I gave it a one point eight. I think there is way there's a lot of room to go down from here. Yes, and it, I don't. Okay. Honestly, I think. No. I think it could be vinegar. I, I, I think you think that would make it better. I think Mad Dog and Night Train and Thunderbird are better wines. Okay, whoa, you've actually whoa. lost your mind. Yeah, I, I, I am yeah. serious. I, you have not that not that they're done well, but I think they are more enjoyable to drink than this is. Oh well, now, that yeah. having been I said, that having been disagree. said, I haven't drank that in twenty years. So yeah. you know, yeah. But this <laughs> is we, of that we rate Mad Dog on this show? <laughs> That. That that honestly is what I what I think. I think that that is more enjoyable than this is. This is terrible to me. So uh, you know. So if 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 you want me to sum that up, Mike loves it. <laughs> Mike would rather drink Mad Dog. Yeah. Mogan David, baby. <laughs> that that has to go on the post. Um, I am totally bringing Mad Dog onto this show sometimes. No, we're not. And, and no. I, I can promise that, that, that it's better than this. And, okay. But it's been 20 years. I think we need to do this now. But Thunderbird. I'll have a backup. Here. Thunderbird. <sighs> Thunderbird. Where is this show going? <laughs> <laughs> what have we done? Uh, well, I, we're not doing that, are we'll we? We'll try anything. I think we are. Oh, God. We're going back to beers next show. Yes, yes All we right, are. So, sure. uh, oh, do we play do we, our game? Do we have to? Does I it think? get you laid? No. No. Uh, or date. it shouldn't. It shouldn't. Date. I'm going to put this as high school because if you're out of high school, you don't need to be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that have you been said, don't drink if you're not under 21. Hey, and if um, you're old enough to buy this, you shouldn't be dating people in high school. So. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Have point. someone else buy it for you because if you're old enough to buy it, there's a problem. Um, and uh, this is a lawnmower beer. I can't, no, I don't. I can't, it's terrible. Yeah. It's not an anything beer. If you want to lay down and let somebody run you over with a lawnmower, it'd be okay. Is it Hold art? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So where are we in the show now? We are talking about art a little bit. Well, uh, yeah, we've, we've talked about a lot of aspects of art. Uh, there is one aspect that we haven't talked about yet, and I'll go ahead and throw it in here because Anna's busy. But um, we, we talked about intentionality and how you have yeah. to – the intention needs to be there and needs to invoke a response. So let me ask this. Under intention, intentionality – are humans the only thing capable of making art? And I'll, I'll give you, th- there's there's a, a, a myriad of examples, but one that I found rather interesting, uh, those weren't the glass I was talking about, but they'll do. <laughs> uh, that's a lot of whiskey? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Goodness. Okay. Well, that's a thing now. <laughs> <laughs> Will you bring me the vodka? <laughs> the, that vodka? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> this show is getting interesting. Um, so, but there's a certain type of puffer fish whose mating habit is it ma- it makes this ring on the bottom of the ocean and decorates it and puts these little wavy oh. patterns in it. And female puffer fish will go around and look at the various males' little rings, <laughs> and whichever one they like the most, they yes. will go and. 
mate with that pufferfish. <laughs> just bring the bottle. It's okay. Just, come on. This is it's okay. I don't know where we're going right now. Um, but they'll go mate with a pufferfish with the nicest ring. So can a pufferfish make art? Yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, because I think it goes back to that idea that we talked about earlier of, of natural art. Uh, that, that she mentioned here. Uh, yeah. Just like I think that uh, a monarch butterfly could be beautiful. Uh, I think that, that there's an art to that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Well, is that in the same category? Because it's something the pufferfish made. Uh, well, yeah, I think I think it is. I don't think it's intentionally making art, but I, but 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 you know, there's there, there's a beauty to it. My God, you're just pouring vodka. In I that. don't. I don't know. Now, I want you to know that, that that you got mad at me for rating this as a one and saying that Mad Dog was better, and you're having to pour <laughs> vodka in it to drink it. I, Are you making art? Yes. <laughs> Uh, God, this show either. has gone to shit. So, interesting case. Uh, I'm deliberately not showing the label of this vodka. <laughs> interesting case. This is this is plastic. It is a seven dollar <laughs> bottle of vodka. And this is a seven dollar glass. <laughs> yes. Um. That I don't think we've ever actually drank. No, there was that one night. That was a bad night. Anyway, interesting case. So there was this photographer went down to a jungle, taking a bunch of nature pictures, right? Um, somehow, don't actually know how the the monkey got... The camera? <laughs> the camera, yes. Um, I think it was a monkey. I don't think it was an ape. It doesn't matter, though. Um, but so gets a hold of the camera, takes a bunch of pictures... I'm sure you've seen him. He like he's taking selfies is what he's <laughs> yeah, doing. Yeah. And now PETA has filed a lawsuit on behalf of Naruto is his name. Um, who gave him that name? Was it his mother or was that PETA who and who put that name personified? On him? Yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't fucking know. I, I'm gonna say it's um, his mother. But I think it's interesting that um, they're arguing for his rights to the royalties. The, yeah, to the his rights to the copyright of these photos, but he is not able to file the lawsuit on his own behalf. I don't think he has it because he used stolen merchandise to do it. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So, you know, that, 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 that would make it kind of difficult. But, uh, but, but, but should he have to be compensated for his work, or is that slavery at that point? He didn't use force. He, he volunteered for it. That is true. He volunteered for it. So, But I do think, uh, let's, let's really talk about this. Can... Is it art if it's if if, if it's unintentionally mm-hmm. created? Uh, you know, nature, uh, the coral reefs, mm-hmm. beautiful pieces. I don't know how many people have chunks of coral in their house as art. Mm-hmm. Well, and and so here's another one on the unintentional creation. Talking about humans. Uh, years ago, we went to a particular national convention. Oh my God! What are you anyway, well, we went to a particular national convention. It's <laughs> what? You not experience the wine anymore? What? Anyway, not the point. We went to a, a national convention and a photo- a, a friend of ours who was really oh, into that, yeah. photography gave uh, Jonah a camera and just said, run around, take photos. Now, I don't think Jonah had at the time the wherewithal to really understand art or intend to make art. He just liked playing with the camera. Yeah, he yep. was five. Yeah. So at that point, is he making art even though he doesn't have the the cognitive understanding of it, but he does know he likes the things and wants to take pictures. Yeah. Or was it art being created by the photographer through his chosen medium? Better yet, here, here, here is, is the art created by the person that makes it, or is, or does it become art only when it's observed and created by the observer? Or was it art already? Because, you know, it's just a picture until I look at it and go, that's an awesome picture. Now it's art. And was right. the creator Jonah, or was the creator the guy who gave Jonah the camera? Yeah, because he even said, he said, I love coming to these things and, like, just giving my camera to a child because I love their perspective. And I think that was an artistic choice intention that he was making yeah. um and like he said some of the photos were really great some of them were obviously trash um but in going through the pictures and picking out the ones that were good did that make those pictures art and the other ones trash which in that case the jonah was a tool 
Exactly. Of yeah. the artist. Yeah. Well, yeah. and, and we, we can talk about being a tool of the artist. Let's say that, let's say there was a particular artist who took some clear looking paint that would um, light up under, let's say, black light or some kind of, you know, fluorescent, and then just like made little puddles of it throughout the city. And then people would walk and step in it and, you know, spread, but they had no idea what they were stepping in, just like put a little water to them and they kind of spread all around the city. And then he took a bunch of like black lights that night and lit up the thing and you could see, you know, all the, the things. Were the people the artist or was he who set the ball in motion of, of like scheming all that out? Was he the artist? Mm -hmm. Uh, it reminds me of the story of the Jackson Pollock painting. I don't know who Jackson Pollock is. Did splatter paints and mm -hmm. all very famous. Uh, there was a there's a, a documentary about it. I think it's called Making a Pollock or Making Jackson Pollock. I think I've uh, seen that. But he uh, he sat in his garage and he took a dog and put tied off like uh, 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 paintbrushes off of it with different colors and chased the dog around the canvas. And then he took this painting to uh, to an art house and said that it was a lost Jackson Pollock. And when they checked it, they, they, the paint went to there, the canvas. They, it went up for auction. I've forgotten how many hundreds of thousands of dollars he was offered before he explained it was a thought experiment. Uh, but is, is, that, is that art? You know, um, yeah, and, and, and was the painting the art or was the or, entire action the, or the was story? was it performance art? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I genuinely want your opinion on this. vastly approved i know it's crazy it's try this still John. terrible no it's not great but you have to try it it's still terrible. my body's a temple <laughs> <laughs> we didn't say what it was a temple too and banksy is attacking it right now attacking that's it's still terrible oh yeah it's not great but it is better it tastes like our first batch of meat it's fucking awful <laughs> it tastes like our second batch of meat <laughs> first batch of meat wasn't that good that is true. <laughs> Lord, Lord, Lord. Blaine so, tasted that meat. He knows what we're talking I did about. Too. It was awful. Yeah, it was. Several people did. Several we people it, we insisted. Took it to beer fest. Yes, and several people at beer camp insisted on trying yeah, we, it. Like we, it can't we were be that bad. Them. We're like, no, it really is that bad. I don't know why it's here. Yeah, I Someone know why I was insisted here. on bringing it <laughs> to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, we we're, we're it's like we're gonna be drinking something anyway. I'm gonna drink that. I mean, I'm not gonna waste it. He wasn't gonna waste it. Oh. oh. I'm, I'm, I'm a different person. It anyway. was art. It was art. It was art. So anyway, that was actually all I had. Um, I came across some super cool theories and people, but they needed their own show. So I want to cover some of those things later. Um, anything else you guys want to add? No, I think we're good. I think we're good. Good. Because uh, if I drink much more of this, it's going to hit me pretty hard. I think it already has. You like it. <laughs> I didn't say I liked it. I said it was better. Than piss. What? We're not going to go into what piss tastes like on this show. But is piss art? <laughs> I suppose it could be. But anyway. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's been an experience. It's been something. Uh, <laughs> we might not bring wine back on this show. It was uh, weird. Not that wine. Yeah, definitely not that wine. We'll bring real wine, hopefully. Of course, it'll be like the beer. Sometimes you get a good one, sometimes you don't. But anyway, um, if you enjoyed the show, hit us up on our website at sixpackphilosophy.com. Uh, social media at... Just search Six Pack Philosophy. <laughs> six Pack Philosophy. Get some super cool swag. <laughs> and this is what happens when we do multiple shows in a day. This is the best plug ever. Teespring.com slash stores slash six pack philosophy. If you want to so see fired. our stuff, just go on the internet. It's all up there. <laughs> if you want us to be able <laughs> to afford better wine, become a patron at patreon.com. Please, please rescue me from this wine. Rescue me. Slash six pack philosophy. This was, I don't even want to tell you guys how much this bottle of wine was. It was fascinating. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've had fun and we hope you have too. Did we have fun? Cheers. Cheers. Fuck off. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. 